Hartford's Old State House in the Greater Hartford Information Center. We're really happy to have you here today. My name is Sally Whipple. I'm the Executive Director of the Connecticut Democracy Center at Connecticut's Old State House, and this is one of my favorite places on earth. And it has been very hard to be away from this building for so long, and we're very happy to be back. Today we're going to be cutting a ribbon to celebrate the reopening of this building that has been here since 1796 and has reopened many, many times for um, all kinds of occasions, legislative sessions, court sessions, the Amistad trials were here, Prudence Crandall's trial was here. It is an incredibly historic building and we love welcoming people to it. And we're happy to be here opening safely. We've been spending the whole spring, winter, and fall, and early summer doing virtual programming, um, doing virtual field trips, but it's really good to be here in person. Our nonprofit is the Connecticut Democracy Center, and we are really proud to operate this building on behalf of the Connecticut General Assembly. The legislative leader's commitment to preserving this historic landmark enables us to share it with people from all Sounds over the fine. world. Yep. And we are very happy to have all of our guests with us today who have done so much to help preserve the old state house and ensure that people understand its meaning and significance in the civic life and history of Connecticut. I'm now going to introduce our speakers for today and then we're going to cut the ribbon and have a concert after that. First, Senator Bob Duff will be speaking to us, and of course he is here representing the General Assembly who operates the building, manages the building with us. And then um, he will be followed by Secretary of the State Denise Merrill, who has a very long association with this building and the programs in it. Uh, and so does Lieutenant Governor Bysowitz, who will also be speaking, and she will be followed by U.S. Senator Richard Blumenthal. So I hope you will join me in welcoming all of our speakers, beginning with Senator Duff. Good morning. Thank you, Sally. Uh, well, good afternoon, everybody, actually. Um, wanted to uh, say that, you know, there's, I'm in Norwalk, and the legislative legislature is not in session right now, so there's only a few things that would bring me back to Hartford from Norwalk right now, and it is definitely the opening and the ribbon cutting for the old state house. Uh, this is a very important building, and I would urge everyone to go online and read about the history of this wonderful building. This building is actually was part of one of two capitals when we had New Haven and Hartford, and actually was is facing this direction so it could look at the Connecticut River, which was so important to our trading and to our economy at that time. So when people come in from Route 2 and look at Hartford, which is such a beautiful way to look at the city of Hartford, you look right at the old state house, and it is purposely done uh, because of the fact that uh, we were looking at the Connecticut River. Um, secondly, I wanted to thank Sally and everybody on the team for uh, continuing to keep the old state house as an important being as it is, an important building, uh, because it does so much for us here in the state of Connecticut. Uh, thirdly, I want to thank the Secretary of the State, uh, Denise Merrill. Uh, in her prior life as a state legislator, she was the co-chair of the Appropriations Committee. Uh, I was the co-chair of the subcommittee that um, was working to try and preserve and save the old state house. But if it wasn't for then, uh, Representative Denise Merrill, uh, we may not be standing here today. So I want to take a, a moment to acknowledge her and all of her service as a public official because we know that she's got one and a half years left to go of this formal service. Um, and then uh, I want to certainly thank Lieutenant Governor Susan Bysowitz for her dedication. She's been in this building quite a bit of times. She understands the history and uh, she has supported a, a budget that does in fact help to maintain uh, our old state house. So thank you, Lieutenant Governor, for your work as well. So again, thanks everybody for being here. It's so, so exciting. And as a legislator, I'm so glad that we have this, we have the care and upkeep uh, of this under the legislative management. So thank you all for being here and for all your hard work. Thank you. Assembly and preserve this building 
which had fallen into some disrepair over the years. So I am so excited to be here to see the reopening of the building. All of us are excited to be outside without masks and back to our normal activities. And uh, the old state house certainly should be one of them. I would also uh, be remiss if I didn't mention some of the things that have happened here at the old state house since we uh, got it reopened those many years ago. And one of them is that I'm so excited about is the Democracy Center, which is now also being funded, I think, in part by the General Assembly. But this is going to be a place where we can truly educate the next generation about our democracy, and I think it has never been more important than it is today. So uh, thank you to Sally and the entire staff for all the work they've put in over many years now, and all the wonderful events we've had here. The Kid Governor ceremony comes to mind. I mean, so many programs that have sprung out of the activities at the old State House. So I also brought along a citation from General Assembly and myself and from uh, the Lieutenant Governor, uh, just commemorating the moment. We'd like to recognize the reopening of the old State House to the public. For 225 years, this historic building has been a beacon of democracy for the people of Connecticut. So we present this certificate to the old State House, the oldest State House in the country. First legislation, legislative session was in 1796 a long time ago. So we have much to be proud of here in Connecticut, and the old State House is certainly one of those things. So uh, thank you very much, and now I would like to introduce my longtime friend, and, uh, and we've been through many things together, the Lieutenant Governor Susan Bysowitz. See, thank you. Madam Secretary, thank you so much for all of your uh, great work. And I am just uh, delighted to be here on this beautiful day after a holiday weekend of parades and fireworks and picnics. Today's ribbon cutting is uh, to celebrate the reopening of one of the gems and historical treasures of our beautiful state. So Connecticut is coming back and uh, we were able to be here today without masks because of all of the public health measures that we've taken and all of vaccinations and putting public health first. So uh, it is really tremendous to be here um, and to welcome back the old state house uh, and also to welcome back the farmer's market. I've already bought some beautiful fruits and, and vegetables uh, from Beckett Farms. And uh, we're also going to be welcoming back concerts for people to enjoy here as well. Um, and as has been mentioned, this is a really important historical site for a whole number of reasons. Um, it's where one of the Connecticut signers of the Declaration of Independence um, had uh, Oliver Wilcott uh, was governor, and it stood here for 72 gubernatorial administrations. It hosted the Amistad trial in 1839, and in 1870, Isabella Beecher Hooker, who founded the Connecticut Women's Suffrage Association, uh, petitioned the General Assembly for women's rights to own property. So uh, I wanted to mention that because uh, the old State House and the Secretary of the State and the General Assembly uh, have been uh, celebrating the 100th anniversary of women's suffrage throughout our state in 2020. And also, uh, this is uh, a day that is special because places like this, museums and historical societies, uh, historical sites, aquariums across our state are not only open, but they're welcoming visitors for free. So children up to the age of 18 can come with an adult for free. So we wanted to get that message out because we have so many uh, beautiful places to visit. Beardsley Zoo and Bridgeport, the Norwalk Aquarium in your district, Senator Duff, and uh, the Mystic Aquarium. So we want uh, parents and families to take advantage of this great opportunity to introduce our children to beautiful places like this. So um, we are delighted 
to be celebrating 235 years of history uh, today and to be cutting this ribbon. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you very much. And now I'd like to introduce Senator Richard Blumenthal. delegation that have brought us seven billion dollars in federal funding and we're hoping for some more infrastructure funding senator so I it is my great pleasure to introduce the fairy godfather of federal funding <laughs> Senator Richard Blumenthal thank you Susan uh, I hope I do hope there will be more there will be more let me put it that way. There will be more. And in fact, those museums around the state of Connecticut are already receiving money under the Shuttered Venue Operator Grant Program. Shuttered Venue Operator Grant Program, first known as the Save Our Stages Program, goes to theaters. The Woodmill recently got about $5 million, and museums, along with zoos and other public places will be getting that money under programs already passed, but we do hope to get more. Uh, and by the way, many of those museums are offering free admission, like the Norwalk Aquarium is, to people who get vaccinated. Very, very important incentive. Uh, today is a, a very meaningful day. I hope we get some photos of this event because it will help me get funding for the Washington Rochambeau Trail. For folks who may not know their American history, and you should, Washington and Rochambeau met here. The French general, our first ally, marched from here 680 miles to Yorktown. Denise Merrill knows that history marched to conclude victory in the Revolutionary War. So even before, even before our independence, this place had historic, legendary value. And this great site of history should continue to be respected and commemorated. I look out my office window in that office building, and I see it all the time, and I'm reminded about the importance of what we do for the state of Connecticut. Uh, Representative Hayes and I have submitted a bill for $700,000 to provide an upgrade for staff for that Washington Rochambeau Trail because of its historic importance. And I'll just add this note, uh, and I'll bet most people don't know it, in that march, about a quarter to a third of Washington's army were black and indigenous fighters. Even before we were conscious of the need for emancipation, black and indigenous men and women were fighting for our independence. So that's a historic fact that should be in our minds uh, all the time. I want to thank everybody here, all the staff, everybody who contributes to make the old state house a living piece of history. It's not something in the past where tours are conducted and people have to be careful about where they walk. It is a living monument to democracy. It has seen recent events. I think I was here most recently for the inauguration of the child governor. So we're still here for important events, and I'm looking forward to coming back in the years that come. Thanks to everyone who is participating in this great rebuilding and renovation campaign to do us proud. Thank you. Thank you very much to everybody. Um, and now we're going to cut the ribbon so the old state house will be officially open. And that will be
followed by a concert by Connecticut State Troubadour Nikita Waller, who is here already, ready to perform for us. And I hope that you will really enjoy um, her music today. It's going to be a great way to reopen the old state house. Um, I'd also like to thank the Richard P. Garmini Found Fund at the Hartford Foundation for Public Giving and the Evelyn Preston Memorial for funding our concert series. So you can come here just about every Friday through um, mid-September to see concerts here along with the Farmer's Market, which is here on Tuesdays and Fridays from 10 to 2 through the end of October. And we have wonderful farmers and vendors, and we hope you'll all come and become regular um, shoppers here at the Farmer's Market. Of course, we ran the market and the concerts last year all during the pandemic, but we're not able to open the doors. Today, we're going to open the doors with a reminder again that um, children from Connecticut and one adult are free all summer long, and we're really going to be happy to welcome lots of kids and adults to this building. But we can't do that until we cut the ribbon. And so I'd like to introduce Senator Duff to take these gigantic scissors and cut the ribbon to the old state house and everyone can enjoy a free tour today. I also want to take a moment to thank uh, legislative management, Jim Tamburo. Why don't you come on up and help me uh, cut the ribbon? And to thank our state capitol police who are here too, who always uh, make sure that everything is safe over here. So, Jim, come on up. 